All right, guys, this is Camera Guy for Crackshot 47, and we're going to be testing out this uh, polymer plate that was given to us by a company in Pittsburgh. I'll have to look up their name, put it in the description. Um, but this, uh, this is about a half inch thick, and I'm very curious to see how it fares against things like 22, 9 millimeter, 5.56. The, uh, one of the reps from the company claimed it, it is self healing, and so I, what better time to test it than when it's well below freezing? So let's give this a whack. Okay, we're gonna start out by shooting it with um, one one round of 22LR CCI Mini Mag out of uh, this 11-inch barrel AR uh, pistol, and we'll see uh, if it does indeed self heal. All right, shot it with one round of 5.56, or I mean 22 LR, and as you can see, it does not self-heal, at least not at this temperature. It punched a nice clean hole through it. So let's see what happens when uh, we shoot it with a nine millimeter. Okay, here we go. So we have ourselves this, uh, sheeting here and we're going to shoot it with a PC9 carbine and see what kind of hole we put through it. All right, let's take a look. Okay, it looks like we put yet another hole daylight yep so safe to say at least at single digit temperatures this stuff is not self-healing so let's try 556 and uh, see what happens okay Dave, we've got the uh, bolt replaced and uh, bolt carrier replacement with a standard 556 bolt carrier in this AR pistol we're going to put a round through this and see how it does. Yep. There's definitely a hole in it. So, let's walk up here, take a look. Yeah, look at that. Nice little daylight hole. That's a 5.56. It's a 22 LR and the 9 millimeter. All right. Well, if this was self-healing, I was thinking I'd um, shoot it with the 12 gauge buckshot and uh, see if it would take that. I'm inclined to still do it just because. And then we'll hang on to this piece and try it again in warm weather. See if it does any better. All righty. Let's do buckshot. I mean birdshot. We'll just do birdshot. I hate buckshot. Hate it. Alrighty, let's see uh, what birdshot will do to this sucker at this close range. Um, I'm very curious to see what it will do, what kind of damage it'll do, and uh, then we'll save what's left of it and uh, mark the holes and we'll do another video reviewing it in warm weather, kind of a part two to this one. So let's see what... Uh, Let's see what bird shot will do to this sucker. Well, I think it's safe to say bird shot is uh, quite effective. So let's uh, walk up here and see what happened to it. Ugh. Okay. Well, look at that. Uh, that looks to me like it did stop birdshot. Amazing. <laughs> well, okay, so what we have here is 
the 22 in the middle that went through and it made kind of a bulge it sorta kind of sorta closed somewhat same thing is true for the nine the uh, five five six which would be the one on the left here five five six sort of closed and nine millimeters closest to the corner so maybe in 50 degree weather this would do something i don't know but it looks like it took a pounding from the shotgun and uh oh i bet there's a bunch of bb's in there yeah there are it caught the <laughs> it caught the bird shot nice okay well i'm definitely going to review this under some good lighting back where it's warm so uh well you guys this was a lot of fun with steamed up glasses and crazy cold temperatures but we had a good time shooting and uh i hope we get to enjoy some time together here again real soon uh this is camera guy for crack shot 47 out how cool is this that we were able to shoot this in super cold and this polymer plate did not crack it deformed as you can see there it did bulge out but it did not crack it absorbed all these BBs and you can see they're they're stuck in there pretty good uh, a couple of them I might be able to get loose but most of them are embedded pretty deeply um, and then these holes here you know I'm looking at them and I'm saying I think they are actually smaller than than the actual projectile so what I'm gonna do is try to work these calipers here so you can see what it says and that's 0.15 and this one's about 0.17 and then this last one is 0.23 okay so basically these holes are shrinking up by about 25 percent in that cold a temperature um, so they partially self-healed now if you look at the back here this was the 556 projectile um, this one was the 22 but the 22 was a hollow point um, the mini mag so that's why it blew out the back here and actually made a bigger exit than the nine millimeter so I think this material has a little bit of promise for a a target but I think it's gonna need to um, be like a considered a semi disposable like it's just not a permanent long-term hey look a self-healing target that lasts forever but you know then again um, the, all self-healing targets eventually are going to be destroyed just because you put so many rounds through them they're just going to fall apart I mean on a long enough timeline so so in case you're not familiar with uh, decimal measurements of bullets uh, I'll demonstrate that you know we've got this 556 five, projectile and it clearly does not fit through the 556 five, hole. Um, it also does not fit through the 22LR hole. In 22LR and 556, five, the bullets are almost the same diameter. They're, you know, a thousandth or so off. And it just barely fits through the hole that the 9mm went through. Of course, 9mm, um, Mr. 9mm. <laughs> it uh it it does not fit I could even hold on to it it does not fit at all in in the hole that you know the, the nine millimeter projectile made so we're gonna wait until we get to um, a spat of warm weather and then we're we're gonna shoot this some more and uh, actually just discovered something the um, the shot BBs if you pound this on something they come out look at that look at that there they are they're all flattened and mangled uh, I bet you most of them don't come out though
but yeah, there's only a handful. There's only six. I don't have my sunglasses on. Hey guys, Crackshot47 here. So I'm back from China, finally back at the range. I'm going to make another video to tell you all about China, but today we're going to get cracking. We're going to get some shooting in. And today we're going to do kind of an addendum to a video that my camera guy did on the self-healing polymer. So today we're going to be shooting 22, 9mm, and 5.56, five, well, 223 Remington. And we're going to see how well this stands up in the heat compared to the cold. Because last time we shot this, it was pretty freezing outside, and I was in China at the time. And there were pretty good results. Uh, it healed up to some extent, not entirely. Now we want to compare the difference. How well does this self-healing polymer uh, heal in the heat compared to in more colder climate? Um, so, without further ado, I know I say that a lot in my video. Let's get started. All right, guys, we're going to start with the Ruger 2245, 22 caliber. See how well this target holds up. We're a little bit far away, but should be able to snag it. All right, guys, uh, as you guys know, we already shot this target quite a few times. Uh, this is the new hole here. So as you can see, 22 long rifle through the polymer. We can take a look at the back here. And the other 22 is right here. Yes. This fresh one up here. So exit, the exit hole is right about here. As you can see, a nice little mushrooming effect. That's the one from the previous shot. It's uh, a, from the previous uh, shooting video. Looks like it, it didn't come out and stay out as much. No, the, no, it didn't. Little, so there's, there's it, we could chalk that up possibly to the change in climate. Uh, so it looks like this hole is a lot less pronounced. And it looks like it's filled up a little bit nicer too. It's a lot more smooth. All right, guys, we're going to try with some bigger calibers as well. And we're going to see if there's any change in the polymer over time. But uh, uh, for this video here, we're going to step it up to 9mm. All right, guys, next up, P89. So this is all chambered up. So I'm going to shoot in single action. We're going to see if uh, see what the effect is on the target. All right, let's take a look. All righty. Where are we at, right here? Yeah, it's, it's got a fresh hole here. Quite a bit bigger than the 22, obviously. You can see the rifling grooves. Yeah, you can. In that That's hole. Interesting. Damn, look at that. All right, out the back. Looks like a smaller hole, actually. It's funny. Definitely less pronounced. Yeah. Compared to 9 mil. Down there, yeah. yeah. It's a lot smoother again. So, it does appear that there is a pronounced difference between shooting this in cold weather versus hot weather. Or warm weather I guess it's not that hot today but it's pretty decent it's probably pushing like 75 so yeah there's definitely a difference in terms of like shooting this in different climates uh, how well this cell feels <laughs> all right so we're gonna try 556 five, next alrighty guys next up 556 five, now real quick first round in here is gonna be full metal jacket the next one's gonna be a soft point so we're gonna shoot this twice see if there's any difference All right, guys, got the trusty old AR-15 here, my go-to AR, BCM, Mary B. Franklin, Armory, Billet Lower. And today we're going to be shooting out of this two rounds. Full metal jacket, first one. Second round is going to be a soft point. We're going to see uh, what difference both of these rounds have on the target here. We're shooting at a pretty, lo uh, pretty low distance, so uh, we're going to try to aim a little bit higher than we otherwise would. This gun likes to... Shoot a little low. Alrighty. 
Get out of range and take a look at the damage. Alrighty. So that's where we impacted here. Small, tiny little hole in the front. Definitely smaller than the cold hole. And check this out, dude. Definitely smaller than the cold hole, which is over here. Yeah, as you can see, they look similar, but right here it's a lot smaller in warmer weather. So I think it's safe to say, based on these three hits that we, well, I guess, based on these uh, three hits that we have with these different calibers, um, yeah, uh, warm weather tends to fare better with this target. This target does pair up better with warm weather. Uh, but now we're going to try out that soft point and see if there's any difference in terms of impact. Uh, typically soft point is pretty devastating on an AR, so let's see what it does to this target. Put the gun back on semi, and we'll give it a shot here. Try to aim a little high on this target here. Alrighty. Take a look. We got a hit. Alrighty. Take a look. Right there. Might be that one. I think that is it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so take a look at the difference in terms of these three. So this is the cold weather shot. That's the warm weather shot for just standard full metal jacket, right? So this is quite a bit smaller. This is the one we have the soft point. Now you can tell the, the polymer did pretty well in catching it and deforming it, but did a lot more damage than standard full metal jacket. So any of you guys thinking about using a soft point for home defense, might be a good choice. All right. Anyway, guys, thanks for coming out with me in this part two, chapter two of this video on the self-healing polymer. And coming up, we're going to give you guys some details about the company that can supply you with this kind of stuff. Like I said, guys, it's good to be back, back in the States, back to shooting, back to serving my audience with whatever the hell I do out here. So thank you very much. God bless. Thanks for watching. And Crackshot47 out.